Hey guys, this is Sam with a lighted path ranch on this beautiful spring afternoon in northern Alabama. And I'm up on the roof of a barn and I'm connecting this mini split air conditioner. And I said, why not make a video about it to help somebody? So here I am. And this is not sold as a, a DIY unit. Now, if you install this yourself and you're not a licensed contractor, it may void your warranty. It's according on who you buy it from, but most likely it will. Now, that being said, this is about half of the cost, and this is a heat pump version. This is half of the cost, cost of, a, of a Mr. Cool package. Now, the difference in that is, also, you also have to buy a set of manifold gauges and a vacuum pump. Now I am a certified HVAC technician and I'm also licensed for the gas, but you don't need any of that to do this because you're not releasing gas into the atmosphere. So you're good with the EPA. You're not buying gas. The, this unit comes pre-charged. The compressor is pre-charged and under these caps, these are valves. You stick an Allen in there and you open these valves out and you uh, release the the gas into the system well we're not uh going to do that and right now what we're going to do is we're going to vacuum this system down and it's going to do two things one it's going to check for leaks we're going to pull a vacuum and we're going to see that it'll hold a vacuum if it holds the vacuum then it's not leaking now a better a better leak test would be to fill it with nitrogen because you can get more pressure in there than a negative but that's something else that not everybody could do but if you put these kits together, they come with flared fittings, your line sets. If you get those things good and snug, you're not gonna have a leak. I've installed dozens of these things and I've only had like one leak one time and that was one that I flared, had to shorten the line set and I re-flared it and I had a, just a slight imperfection on it. So with these pre, pre-made systems, you shouldn't have any problem if you get them good and tight. But with this, this, with this process, you should know and be able to tighten it up and you, before you release your gas. So this is pre-releasing your gas. So you could get a manifold set very similar to this. This is something I've put together over the years. Now this part, this manifold gauge is new and this hose is new. But you could get this in a cheap pump like I have. I don't have an expensive pump because I don't do this for a living and I don't, I don't need an expensive pump. But this one gets the job done. Anyway, you could get this for under $150, probably under $100 now, you can get some uh, imported ones. But anyway, uh, what you do is you take this yellow service hose and you'll hook it connected to your pump right here. Make sure you got all these fittings sealed up good because you don't want to leak on any of your fittings on your lines or, or you're going to think you, your testing equipment is going to be leaking and you're gonna think that your problem's over here on the unit. Now another thing you'll have to have is this adapter. I bought this separate and this is uh, for R410A, you'll need this adapter. You'll, if you got an older uh, manifold gauge set, it probably doesn't have it. I think a lot of new ones come with it. I ordered this one separate because I had my, my stuff before it, they came out with 410A. But even this 410A, you, this is the only service port you have right here. And that's where you're gonna pull your vacuum on your low side. Uh, even your 410A, if you do have a leak once you gas this system, you can buy it online without a license. Most of your stores will sell it to you, some won't. But you can go take an online class and I think it's 10 pounds or less or something without doing an in-person class. And you can have a wallet card that you can go in the store or anywhere and buy any of your refrigerant unless they've changed. That's the way it used to be anyway. But you don't need it for this and you're not gonna be charging this system with gas anyways, all, all inside the unit here, in your outdoor unit. Now what we're doing here is we're testing the line set, we're pulling a vacuum on it, and then on the inside, your head that blows the cold air out is gonna be pulling the a vacuum on the coil inside there. So if there's a leak inside this unit from the factory, we'll know because there won't be any gas in it when we go to release it. 
so there's nothing to test here but what this does is gonna pull a vacuum on there we're gonna run this thing I'm gonna run mine for 30 minutes and right here on on this gauge it's got some vacuum on it now I'll let that out just so get back to zero I had already run the vacuum on here for a few minutes before I said, you know what, do a video. All right. So we're starting at zero on this gauge, right? What we want is negative 30. But I'm gonna run it for 30 minutes and then it, and if it's reached negative 30, right away you'll know if you have a massive leak because you're not gonna pull a good vacuum. Uh, but 30 minutes and then I'll come out here and I'll cut the pump off and then I'll wait an hour. You can wait longer, the be longer the better, the better the test is. But uh, an hour is good for me because I want the AC on tonight. And, uh, and if it's still holding negative 30 after an hour, I'm gonna release, take all this loose and I'm gonna release the gas. But here's the process. You got your line hooked up. You make sure you got everything tight so you'll have no leaks on your stuff. Make sure these valves are off. When you manifold gauge, make sure this is tight and flip your pump on. So we're watching our gauge. We're going to ease open this valve here on our low pressure manifold. And see instantly it's coming down. You see it's creeping up on that negative 30. And it should be there now all right so now we'll wait 30 minutes and we'll be back so i'll be back in a few minutes all right guys it's been 30 minutes you see it's still negative 30 we're gonna turn our pump off if it instantly goes up you know you have a major leak we're still negative 30 maybe a touch under there so we're gonna leave leave this i'm gonna wait one hour and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna check and see if I still have negative 30. So we'll see you in an hour. All right, guys, I'm back. And I'm rushing it from, originally I told you an hour, but I'm going with 30 minutes, which is plenty of time because of the obvious, I'm trying not to get wet. But so after 30 minutes with the pump off, still holding negative 30. You can see my valves open, I'm not cheating. So what, what I'm gonna do here, first of all, earlier, I said there was two things it was gonna do and I didn't finish my thought. Number one, it's gonna, excuse me. Number one, it's gonna uh, test for leaks. It's gonna pull a vacuum on the system. Number two, it's gonna evacuate all the air out of the system, all the moisture, you know, the contaminants. What you wanna do is you wanna leave a vacuum on here so when your refrigerant enters the system and enter these lines it's replacing a vacuum and not a uh, neutral pressure or positive pressure of air because if you get moisture in there and that's what air is going to do is bring moisture condensating from the outside line to the inside line if nothing else and it's going to accumulate and it's going to block inside inside this unit and you're going to have trouble with it and you and and I've heard of people, and I did my first one of these years ago. I did it without vacuum down the lines. And that unit's still running to this day without an issue. But it was probably overcharged, and it was probably a lot of luck involved, which I don't believe in luck. I was just very blessed at the time because I serve a, a savior, a risen savior. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to be blessed with this because we did it correctly. And what we got here is still negative 30 and here's where some people will go wrong they're gonna take this off and when they take that line loose they're going they may still have some negative pressure but they're going to release some of their vacuum so what i'm gonna do is leave that my gauges and everything connected and i'm gonna, i've already loosened these caps with a wrench because they'll be snug from the factory i'm gonna go ahead and release my free I'm gonna open my high side first. And if you hear a little hissing, don't stop. And just do it quickly and back this screw all the way out. And then you do your low side as well. Back them all the way out. 
now that we've got these valves backed all the way out we're gonna go ahead and put the caps back on them it's just good practice to seal these up i don't know that it would like i say i don't do this for a living this is not a how to but it's a how i do and i'm gonna snug these down I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on there because if I do, I'd need a wrench on both of these to keep from twisting these valves off and creating a leak. I'm just gonna snug them up. I've always felt like if there was just a little bit of a leakage inside these valves, that these caps would save you or at least buy you some time. And again now, if this is gonna void your warranty, you may still wanna find a, a licensed contractor to do this for you. I actually, uh, in my area, I could buy this kit and I could have paid some money to do all of this and I, and to not void my warranty and I would have still came out on top and saved a few hundred bucks on a Mr. Cool. Right now this system is half the price and I and if I had to buy these tools new, I would end up with cool tools for the garage when I'm done. So now that I got my system charged, make sure all my gauges are still closed and I'm gonna back this nut off as quickly as possible. You're gonna hear a little hiss and you're gonna have a little bit of a Lost, but it's no big deal. It's not going to be enough to matter anything. Just got to work fast. And you should wear gloves. Don't do as I do. Do as I say do. And just like that, same as with others, you snug that cap. And now you're ready for power and ready to start it up. I thank you guys for watching. And uh, remember, Christ died for us all. To save us from our sins. There's nobody no worse than me, and he saved me so he can do it for you too. Love you and God bless. It's just an air, air conditioner in a barn, but man, that's nice cold air right there. Hope this can help some guys get their, uh, their barn cool or their house or the garage or whatever they're working on. Remember, guys, there's a lot of a lot of people gonna comment and say you should have done this and you should have done that and that's all right i know there's other ways and i know there's micron meters and all that but you know what the gauges i got have been working for me and so far i haven't had a problem so hopefully it'll work for you and if not you don't have a lot in it you can call the guy to come and fix it thank you guys